Hello everyone. I'm Mike Sullivan as your host today. Our second story today takes us to the children of Israel as they are on the edge of the promised land. The second incident occurred under the direction of Moses shortly after he led the Israelites out of Egypt. They had camped in the wilderness of Paran near the boundary of the promised land, and Moses used spies to determine what the promised land was like. Moses conducted the second earliest spying operations recorded in the Bible. As previously mentioned, the purpose of this operation was to spy out Canaan. He chose twelve prominent individuals, one from each of the twelve tribes, to be his spies and instructed them to go to the promised land and learn what the land was like. To provide proof that indeed it was a land flowing with milk and honey, he instructed his spies to return with samples of fruit. This is Mike Sullivan, and I will be back next week with more on part two of Moses and the Twelve Spies. You are holy, you're so worthy, God you've won my heart, you're our creator, a loving father, you know me from the start, you are holy, you're so worthy, God you've won my heart, you're our creator, a loving father, God you've won my heart, I'm gonna put God everybody i'm pf and we have an awesome story for all of you today it's the story of moses and the 12 spies now i want us to look at some of the background into this story today 
First, God told Moses to have one man, a leader from each of the tribe of Israel, to spy the land of Canaan. So there were 12 tribes, so naturally there would be 12 spies sent to search the land of Canaan. Moses told them to go to the south into the mountains, and they were to see what the people there were living like. And then they were to bring back fruit toward the end of their report of what they found in the land, along with all of the information and the strategies of where these people are all located. Now, at this time, the Israelites were camping in a place called Paran, near the boundary of the Promised Land. This would be a place that Israel spends a lot of time over the next number of years camping there until the time of Joshua as the leader after Moses. Now, back to today. Each of the 12 men were prominent leaders of their tribes within Israel. In other words, they were pretty much the ones that actually ran the tribes. They were well trained to fight, and if needed, they were very notorious in the many responsibilities that Moses gave them, and that is to be in charge of their tribe and to see the needs of the people within their tribe. All this while they were traveling from Egypt to the Promised Land for the first time. Now, Professor Whoopi will be here in just a few moments to share the rest of the story with you today. So, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello everyone. I'm JB the Bible Junkie and I am here to do the memory verse with you. Our verse is found in the book of Numbers chapter 13 and verse 32. It says, And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 32. NIV. Okay everybody. At the count of three, I want you to say the verse with me. Are you ready? One, two, and three. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 32. NIV. This is definitely an exciting lesson this week. But remember it's only part one. Next week we will be finishing up the story on Moses and the 12 spies. So be sure to join us next week. But for now, our team is coming to open up this story today. Well, it's time for me to go for now. This is JV, the Bible Junkie checking out for today. I will see you next week. Hello everybody, my name is Orange, and I need a jar. I need a ball. Now I will take the ball out of the jar. Uh oh, it's a little harder than I thought. I don't look, but I'm stuck in here. I'll get it out, and then I will get the ball out. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Now, watch as I tip the jar. There goes the ball. The jar equals God and the ball equals our life issues. When we let God deal with it, he can get the ball out. When we try, we just cannot get out of the jar. Hello everyone, I am Professor Whoopi, and I'm here to whoop you up a big one for you today. Wow, that's right. Let's go to the book of Numbers chapter 13, verses 17 through 26 in the NIV. It says, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he told them go through the Negev and then into the mountain region. 
See what the land is like and whether the people are living there are strong or weak, few or many. Is the land they live in good or bad? Do their cities have walls around them or not? Is the soil rich or poor? Does the land have trees or not? Do your best to bring back some fruit from the land. So the men explored the land from the desert of Zin to the border of Hamath. They went through the Negev and came to Hebron, where Ahamian and Shigal and Tamalia lived. They are the descendants of the Annex. When they came to the Eskol Valley, they cut off a branch with only a bunch of grapes on it and carried it on a pole between them. They also brought some pomegranates and figs. So they called that valley Eshol because of the bunch of grapes that the Israelites cut off there. Forty days later, they came back from exploring the land. They came back to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kedish in the desert of Paran. And they gave their report and showed them the fruit from the land. Whoa! So, it would be easy to say that there was an excitement in the whole camp as these 12 men came back from 40 days of spying out this land that flowed with milk and honey. Upon their return, they reported their findings publicly to Moses and to the 12 tribes. They brought back a uniform opinion regarding the cities, number of people, lay of the land, and the fact that the countryside was indeed flowing with milk and honey. Ten of the spies, however, reported that the people were so physically large and well organized that if an invasion was attempted, the Israelites would be destroyed. They advocated stoning the two spies who said that an invasion should be attempted. Only two of the twelve spies said that we could take the land with God's help, while the other ten had already spread rumors around the camp that this could not work and Israel would fail. Well, God severely punished them for their failure. They were told that they would be required to remain in the wilderness for one year for every day that the spies spent in the promised land. That is, 40 years. So the 40 years were to the 40 days that they spent spying. They were furthermore told that everyone over the age of 20 would be denied entry into the promised land and that only the only exception would be the two spies who maintained their faith and their names are Joshua and Caleb. Oh, I tell you, I wouldn't want to be the rest of those 10. Ooh, not in a long shot. All right. Well, next week we're going to wrap up this story because there's so much to tell that we couldn't get it all in one. But it is time for me to go and the rest of the team will be here to fill you in on all the other details of this story today. So it's time for me to say goodbye. Avirase. Arrivederci. Hasta la vega. Hasta la vega. Hula hula. Ho ho ho. Last but not least, as always, Aru Babu. Ho ha ha ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ho. Oh, don't ever forget the God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and Professor Whoopi and friends. We love you, and we want to see the best for you. Okay, goodbye. What is trust? Trust is an important part of all relationships and friendships. Trust is the easiest thing in the world to lose and the hardest thing in the world to get back. Trust involves believing that someone is dependable and won't let you down. Trust is a feeling of confidence and security. To trust someone, you need to feel good about them. God is someone we can always trust. What his word says, he will always do. 
As we put our trust in God, He will always be with us to guide and lead us. Isn't it time to trust God? Give it a try honestly, you cannot go wrong. Hello everyone. I'm Jenny here with today's final thoughts. As you have already seen the children of Israel chose to believe a bad report from the ten spies out of twelve that were sent to spy out the land. These ten leaders who should have known better than to not trust that God would deliver them, choose to spread a bad report among the tribes and throughout the entire nation of Israel. Next week we will address the consequences of their actions. But for today, we must remember when God says that He will be with you. You better believe it and follow His leading and direction in your life. Where people go wrong is when they think they have a handle on God, and that God isn't enough to do what He said He would do. See you all next week. Our comic skit today is on trusting God. Let's see what awaits our characters today. When you trust someone, you rely on them to help you. You know that they would never hurt you. When we trust God, we remember that He knows what is best for us and that He will always take care of us. Trusting God means that we must trust and follow His directions even not knowing what the final outcome will be. So, Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6 tells us that us that we can trust God and follow His directions for life which we find in His Word. He knows the future and holds it in His power. In Proverbs 3 5 to 6 it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. All right class I will see you tomorrow, be ready for the test. Hey Sam, we have a lot to study tonight. Yay. So, you want to go out tonight? No. Sam, I'm going to study tonight for the test. Your loss. I'm going out. You should study. I already, know everything. Okay. That might not be enough. I got this test, it's a breeze. You all have 45 minutes to complete this test. After you're done turn it in to me and you can leave. One by one, everyone gets done with their test. All except Sam. He was still trying to answer the questions. After 45 minutes, Sam turned in his paper and he tried to leave. Sam, are you sure that this is all you want to answer? Yes, it's all I could do. You could have tried, to answer the other questions? Well, I really didn't have the time to answer them. Did you? Study for this test? No, I had more pressing things to do. Well Sam, I don't like to do this, but I have to give you an F. Hey Sam. I aced the test. That's awesome dude. What did you get? Teachers, still grading mine. Really? Yay. She'll have it in a couple of days. Okay. You know Sam, I was scared to take the test. I prayed and studied, and decided to trust God for the rest. Yes, I did too. I know I'll do great on it. There is a world of difference, when you put your trust in God versus putting your trust in yourself, or man. Man will always let you down, but God, will never let you down. Will, I don't know about you, but I want to follow God in everything He directs me to do. Believe me when I say that if you do not follow God's leading, you'll always end up in a bad, very bad way. Then, you still have to come back to God, repaint, I mean repent, and then you always ha need to follow God's leading and direction. After all, He knows what's best for us.
Always. You know, after all God did for Israel so far, you would have thought they knew to follow God and not worry or complain. But no, they chose to be stubborn and to rebel against God. Imagine that, I mean, after all, how ridiculous is it to rebel against God? You know what? You always lose. Believe me when I say that. Well, it's time for me to go today, but I'll be back next week to tell you all about what happened when Israel had to face their disobedience. See you all next week. Bye. This has been an OJO production. Thank you very much.